live, getting results. This is News 6 at 7. It's the video that already has many in Central Florida talking. An Easter Bunny's brawl in downtown Orlando. Tonight, the man inside the costumed character is telling us how this all started. Plus, a solar power pushback. One man says he just wants to help save the planet. Hear why his city is saying no to where he wants to put up the panels. Good evening. This is News 6 at 7, getting results. I'm Ginger Gadsden. I'm Lisa Bell. Thanks for joining us. Also, when seniors lost their lives after Hurricane Irma, state lawmakers demanded costly changes. And when the state dropped this on them, it was catastrophic. News 6 investigates which nursing homes and assisted living facilities are ready for hurricane season and new in minutes why one safety expert says some are making dangerous decisions. We'll get to that story coming up. But our top story right now, the story behind video that's already going viral, an Easter weekend brawl with an Easter bunny throwing punches and a police officer trying to break it all up. The man inside the bunny costume says the guy he punched had it coming. News 6 reporter Vanessa Ariza tells us why. This is where that fight took place. The man behind the suit tells us he wasn't coming over to get in the fight. Rather, he tells us he was trying to break it up. He said he thought he saw a woman in need. I got it all, bro. Antoine McDonald will tell you he is not one to jump into a fight. I'm the oh. I would say I'm the type of person to avoid fight by any means necessary. But in that situation, I would fight any day. A few months ago, he and his friends bought the bunny suit to garner some laughs. He brought it out for Easter Sunday, but never thought it would land thousands of views on social media. Bunny, <laughs> he was wearing it last night when he got into the middle of a fight along Orange Avenue, close to Saks Comedy Club. The guy was just basically, I don't know if he was bullying her or what. So then I see him spit on her and she starts hitting him and everything. McDonald didn't know the woman or the man involved, but he said, he won't tolerate disrespect towards women, so he jumped in to try to break it up. I'm, I'm going to say I'm happy so people know that they can't, you know, just spit on African-Americans, especially African-American females and think that it's OK. Like I was shook, like when I seen him like spit on her, I was like, yo, you got to go over there. You know, you got to do something about it. An Orlando police officer broke up the fight and told everyone to go their separate ways. The fear of arrest did cross McDonald's mind. The thought went through my head when the cop came over, but you know, I didn't leave. I didn't run. I said, you know what? This man deserved it. You know, if I have to be arrested for this, you know, to prove a point that this shouldn't be happening, then so be it. In downtown Orlando, Vanessa Ariza getting results news six. Now you can see the entire raw video of the brawl and share it with your friends from the homepage of clickorlando.com. New details tonight about a 14-year-old shot to death. The family of Anthony Reed shared pictures of their loved one, who was a student at Memorial Middle School. Deputies were called to the intersection of J.R. Street and Starbright Drive on Saturday night. That's near the Mall at Millennia and blocks from Ikea. Neighbors say someone in a car shot Reed, then drove off. It's just a sad thing. 14 years old, the kid had just started living. Detectives say they are still working to find a motive, but told News 6 the shooting is likely not random. Reed would have turned 15 next month. Joel Dixon's son played basketball with Reed. He knows the kid, and uh, we, uh, we're just so sad to see things like this just keep happening over and over again. Last night, I was made aware that one of our students passed away yesterday. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family. In addition to that robocall to parents, the principal of Reed's school had grief counselors on hand. The family is planning a vigil for Reed on Thursday. If you can help make an arrest, call the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Well, it is a setback in the future of space and for SpaceX. But two days after this smoke was spotted in the sky over Cape Canaveral, we still don't know how big a setback because SpaceX has not said a single word beyond confirming there was an anomaly with its Crew Dragon capsule. That's the spacecraft expected to fly astronauts from U.S. soil for the first time since the shuttle retired. We've had explosions in the past. We're going to have explosions in the future. Let's just hope they continue to be without people on board. Now, CBS space analyst Bill Harwood says whatever happened, it is almost certain to delay the first launch with astronauts. 
Obviously, with that vehicle, we think destroyed. I say we think because SpaceX hasn't confirmed anything about the status of the vehicle. The in-flight abort test certainly is going to slip, and with it, we think, the first piloted flight of this new capsule. Now, the launch was penciled in for July. As soon as NASA or SpaceX reveals more, we will post it at clickorlando.com space. You can also read more about the recent test flights to the ISS. All lanes are back open after a bad crash in West Orange County. Troopers tell News 6 the chain reaction crash on State Road 429 sent four people to the hospital. Two were flown there. Sky 6 was over the crash scene in the Winter Garden area. Troopers say while one person was in critical condition, everyone is expected to survive. The Red Cross is, Red Cross is getting results for families living homeless after a raging condo complex fire. So I knew it's going to go, it's going to go real quick. You know, it's just a matter of time. So just go. Taj Nal says he quickly grabbed what he could, banging on the door so neighbors would get out of the Regency at Lake Mary complex. It's off Lake Emma Road. Everyone made it out safely, even a few cats and a snake. So then when they brought him out, I was just like, okay. I was like, we're good now. I'm fine. I was like, it's good. At least eight units were heavily damaged. As many as 20 have smoke or water damage. The fire marshal is looking into the cause. Also in Seminole County, an unusual arrest caught on camera. One where a carjacking suspect was found driving or trying to hide in a lake. Sanford police released body cam video of the lake takedown. They were first called about a carjacking near Country Club Drive and Jefferson Boulevard around 1.45 this morning. A man was working on his truck when police say Monterius Burton jumped in and tried to drive away. They struggled and Burton ran off. Police tracked him down, first finding Burton's shoes in the water. Later, police say a canine found Burton submerged. It's a debate between preserving history and saving energy. A local man wants to put solar panels on the front of his historic home. But the city's preservation board says no. News 6 reporter Nadine Giannis looks at the reason why they are pushing back. It was at today's city council meeting that Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer once again spoke about the city's goal to be 100% self-sustainable by 2040. And that was funny to this homeowner who says at the same meeting and on Earth Day, the city is stopping him from putting solar panels in the one place of his home that gets the most sun. The city explaining their decision today. Well, you see, this is where the sunlight is. On this Earth Day, Cy Pizam says he wants to do all he can to make our world cleaner. We all read about what's happening to the earth and all the pollution and some of us can do things, others can't. We have the wherewithal to do it and I wanted to do the right thing. And he wants to do so by installing solar panels to have his 1949 home in the historic district of Lake Cherokee completely renewable. So I thought, you know, this would be a nice step forward and set an example for my kids. However, he says the city won't let him, at least on the one part of his roof he says gets the most sun. But now they're arguing that it's an eyesore. But the only place that the science shows that, that they should be placed is in the front of the house. And he finds it funny that on Earth Day and at a city council meeting where the mayor was touting the city's own goals to be 100% sustainable. Our 2040 sustainability go goals in a globally consistent way uh, to help us advance a cleaner, healthier, and more sustainable future for Orlando. That they denied his request to the panels on the front of his house by only allowing them on secondary panels and in the back. All recommendations from the city's historical preservation board. And I'm sorry, buddy, Dyer tried to do what you asked. I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was doing it, and I'm told now, no, it's not the right thing. They said we did approve solar panels anywhere on that property except on that front-facing roof. And the city of Orlando wants to make it clear that Pazam can have solar panels at his house at other places, just not in the front. Pazam said it simply wouldn't work any other way. The city says he could have also appealed it, but didn't. In Orlando, I'm Nadine Giannis getting results, News 6. Well, if you hear what sounds like live bombs falling in the northern part of our area this week, that may be because that's exactly what it is. The U.S. Navy is conducting bombing practice. Teams out of Jacksonville are practicing at the Pine Castle Impact Range in the Ocala National Forest. 
people in Marion, Volusia, and Lake Counties could hear the bombs from 9 until 1.30 and then again from 3 until 4 in the afternoon. This is going on until Thursday. You'll find full details at clickorlando.com. Well, it is a big reason for a group of special students to celebrate in minutes why their upcoming graduation at UCF is a first of its kind thanks to a program that is getting results and changing lives. But first, are assisted living facilities ready to protect people this hurricane season? Why one expert says some are making dangerous decisions about generators and backup power. And how you can check who is complying with a new state law. That's next. During the break, we are streaming live on Facebook. Find me at facebook.com slash Ginger Gadsden News 6. We're getting results in Sam Sula, Summerfield, and all of Central Florida here on News 6 at 7 and our free News 6 app. This view is provided by the Orlando Health Camera. Live with Lisa Bell, Ginger Gadsden, weather with Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells, and special reports from the investigators. This is News 6 at 7, getting results. It is one of the indelible images after Hurricane Irma. Seniors saved from nursing homes and assisted living facilities. After a dozen patients died in sweltering conditions in South Florida, lawmakers took action. Now, the new law required new and costly changes and gave operators a tight deadline to make it all happen. And now, just over a month before hurricane season 2019 and almost a year after their deadline, News 6 investigator Adrian Ivashinsky has learned many homes are still not up to code. And new at 7, one safety consultant says some are making dangerous decisions. That new law requires nursing homes and assisted living facilities to have backup generators, an emergency power plans, and enough fuel for four days in order to run those generators. But we discovered not all of those assisted living centers have their equipment in place. News 6 visited three of the more than 3,000 assisted living facilities currently licensed with the state to see which ones had their emergency power plans and equipment in place. Only one of them did, Alabama Oaks of Winter Park. We have been approved as of March 11th. Facility Administrator Jennifer Brown says they went through a six-month renovation and had to meet the new state power plan guidelines in order to reopen their doors. Okay. That included putting in a brand new backup generator in place and training the staff how to use it. Ultimately, the safety of your residents is what's priority. Nice generator, take on the whole facility. Emergency management consultant Bob Misco helped Alabama Oaks with their emergency power plan. He's helped more than 100 assisted living facilities in 14 counties do the same. But he says during some of his follow-up visits, he's discovered some facilities are taking matters into their own hands and potentially putting their residents at risk. So you say you're scared. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely concerned. This is just one picture he submitted to the Orange County Fire Marshal's office two weeks ago, showing a gas generator placed too close to a facility and putting them at risk of inhaling dangerous carbon monoxide fumes. Some of these transfer switches that we've seen haven't been permitted. They're actually jury rigged to where you have to throw this switch and turn this switch on and flip this one over to on and then turn it off. And my concern is, is that somebody is going to miss a step and they're going to backfeed the panel and there's going to be a fire. So this is our CEMP. Brown says she's heard of several smaller assisted living facilities closing their doors because of the cost and backlog associated with these new power plan measures. As for those facilities taking shortcuts, she says it's not worth it. A lot of it's going to be rejected and they're going to have to start the process over again. So I think doing it right the first time, it's the best way to go. Brown says she has this advice for anyone out there who has a loved one in a Central Florida facility. They should be asking to see the equipment and to know what the plan is and what the process is and if the caregivers have been trained. Adriana Ivashinsky, Getting Results, News 6. And Adriana says if you look online, most nursing homes and assisted living facilities have filed for at least one extension to give them more time. And if you want to get results for your loved one, visit the facility and ask to see their emergency power plans and equipment. Any good facility will have no problem showing it to you. And if they don't, that is a big red flag. 
Well, a special group of UCF Knights are celebrating a major milestone. UCF is the only school in the state to provide a program for students with intellectual challenges. Yeah, today they recognize their first group of graduates. I'm here today and be grateful for this. It's amazing. Elise Mundelein is one of those 13 graduates. She joined the program three years ago, living on campus and experiencing the college life. Now Elise has two job interviews lined up, and her mom, Tina, could not be prouder. I think for us, it's been a long time coming. I think our involvement with UCF is so far reaching, and we're so grateful. I just want to just thank UCF for giving us this opportunity. All 13 students got their caps, gowns, and graduation stoles today. They'll get their graduation certificates at the ceremony on May 3rd. And I just find it shocking that this is the first one of its kind, but definitely and the only I, one I, in Florida. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like others will take note from this because that what a great idea. And a big congratulations to those students and their family. It was not an easy task for mm -hmm. them to accomplish they did that. It. Yep. Well, today is Earth Day and the 21st birthday what? of Disney's Animal Kingdom. So maybe it is fitting. The park announced today it is making changes to its nighttime spectacular Rivers of Light. In addition to the floats, fountains and fire, the show will add imagery from the Disney nature films and classic moments from animated classics. Here's a rendering of what the new show will look like. Ooh. Rivers of Light, We Are One is due to debut this Memorial Day weekend, right around the corner. Oh, and by the way, it's also Chief Meteorologist Tom Stoll's birthday. So much to celebrate today, Tom. Thank you for my gifts. Thank you for being born. <laughs> yes. uh, you're welcome. I think you're the one who actually brought in cake today. I did, because we can't eat it all at my house. <laughs> Smart man. Yeah, man, we got to get yeah. rid of that stuff. It was good, though. <laughs> oh, you guys didn't try it. You know why you ran out. Correct. I went around like, hey, cake, and then pfft, gone. You know to save as a piece. The newsroom. I thought I had. <laughs> Matt Austin got in, but you didn't. Sorry. Hey, take a look at what's going on. It's been a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Tomorrow will be the same. On the Sorrel Ooh, scale for tomorrow, a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being awesome, that's tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. That's Ooh, a great cool. looking picnic. Yeah, it reminds you of Napa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the wine bottle does. Yeah, glad, you're, glad your vacation's <laughs> over. Glad to be back. Mm-hmm. Glad to have a gig to come home to, you bet. <laughs> hey, forecast for tomorrow, a 10 on the Sorrel scale looks like this. It's going to be beautiful. Lake Helen over in Volusia County, 59 degrees at 8 a.m. By noon tomorrow, 79. 3 o'clock, 84. 6 p.m. temperature, 76. Bavard County, Mico tomorrow temps all the way up to about 80. Probably not beyond that, though, because it's going to be in there about 80 degrees, maybe 85 in Orlando, but beachside with the wind. Coming over the water, you'll stay a little cooler. Almanac page for today, we did stay just below normal. Today, the normal would be at 84. We only made 83, nowhere near the record of 94. But look, it's beautiful. Orlando Health Camera, 78 degrees at news time. Daytona Beach, wow, how great does that look? 73 degrees with wind from the east northeast at 11. It's 80 in Ocala. Gainesville hasn't budged. 84, 81 Kissimmee, 75 right now in Melbourne. Wind speeds along the coast, a little higher than across the interior in some spots, but we do still have a 12 mile per hour wind in Orlando. Visible satellite image is starting to fade out, but you see little speckles, little smatterings of clouds. That's all she wrote. Weather story for tonight, cool, clear. Tomorrow, dry, sunny, warm, stays that way until Friday when the scattered showers make a comeback. What you're looking at here is the water vapor loop. All the dark and all the orange, that's the dry air giving us that blue sky. Tonight, that doesn't change. Tomorrow, it doesn't really change either, but you do see a touch of cloud cover building on the coast, and then on Wednesday, some thin upper-level clouds come through, but no rain in my forecast until at least Friday. Lows tonight, 50s all around, 58 in Orlando. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast is brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Yeah, this is near perfection. Cool in the morning, warm in the afternoon. Good stuff. The high is 85. Check out the week ahead. 85 does it tomorrow, 62 is the low come Wednesday. Back to normal 85, then 87 Thursday. Unfortunately, this past weekend will not be the mm. coming up weekend. We've got rain chances starting on Friday. I want to go back now. Okay. For the last weekend. You figure out how to do great. that. You uh, let me know. She wants to go back to wine country. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> See you later. Well, Survivor is looking to cast its next group of castaways, and you have a shot. 
Turn out this Sunday at Victory Casino Cruises near Jetty Park from eight until from ten until two. Ten until two. Read the requirements and find the forms you'll need on ClickOrlando.com. Well, an underage officer is joining one county sheriff's office. Why oh. this puppy is a first. All right, that's adorable. <laughs> and how you can help get him results. Matt Austin has that story next. Everything you need. Remember, News 6 is always on ClickOrlando.com, your smartphone, and your tablet. Take us with you. Hey, I'm Matt Austin. An eight-year-old girl in Orlando spends her weekends getting results by sparking hope, one sandwich at a time. At 9 a.m., reporter Carolina Cardona introduced us to Lucy DeCoco. A second grader started the Spark Hope Initiative two years ago. Each weekend, Lucy hands out a wagon full of peanut butter sandwiches to strangers in need of a meal. The project also gives away toothpaste, toothbrushes, and bottles of water. Hear how a trip to a pet store sparked this big idea. Carolina's full story is on the homepage of ClickOrlando.com. Flagler County Sheriff's Office needs your help tonight, but not to fight crime, but to name its newest adorable crime fighter. Look at this face. For the first time in decades, the agency has added a bloodhound to the force. Once fully trained, the bloodhound will help find missing people. But right now, he's a pup, and all he needs is a name. Share your suggestions by Thursday. You'll find the link on the News 6 Facebook page. Also big on Facebook tonight, people online and around the world are marking Earth Day 2019. The year marks the 50th anniversary of the event that sparked the idea, which was a massive oil spill in the Pacific it started in late January and lasted all the way into February, 10 days in all. Earth Day launched April 22nd, the very next year, with the help of President Nixon and his wife. Learn more at Facebook.com slash News 6. I'll see you right back here tonight at 11 o'clock. And thanks for watching News 6 at 7. Inside Edition is next. And remember, we break news on ClickOrlando.com. We'll see you tonight.